study which we carried out. So the case study, so what was this? The clinical history of the patient was, it was a native renal biopsy to be carried out. The patient had deteriorating renal function and positive MPO antibody and they're querying evidence of vasculitis. Deteriorating renal function meant this tissue. This, this case was treated as urgent when we took up to the pathologist. So the patient was taken to the bed, as you can see in the top right hand corner. And basically, they were assessing whether kidney damage was due to vasculitis or other cause and to find the reason for the deterioration of renal function. So, so the biopsy was undertaken. The biomedical scientist, in this case was myself, was called down to carry out the procedure. So we took the cores, I identified them. As you can see in the bottom two slides, the renal biopsy contained glomeruli, the small red dots you can see in the tissue, and I've pointed out in with a small knife in the last image in the bottom. I worked with the renal registrar, the nurses in the area to help take adequate cores. In this case, three passes were required to achieve the adequate number of cores for me. So now to the laboratory stage. So after taking the three sections and splitting it into the three pots, I now began the process of taking them up. So light microscopy, immunofluorescence and electron microscopy were now all present and transported them to the laboratory. Next, consult in consultation with the renal consultant, processing the light microscopy and immunofluorescence samples began and they were required a rapid process cycle for the light microscopy and same day processing for the light the immunofluorescence. Well, the electron microscopy sample was at the same time prepared for sending to Glasgow. The result was the renal biopsy was now processed, embedded, and sections were cut for hematoxin and acin and special stains from the LM section. So now I'm going to cover what happened with the renal IF. So the renal immunofluorescence, two cores were still present here, so they were taken preserved in the cryofix in the small chuck and prepared for the cryostat and cryo cryotomy. Here, a hematoxin acin and immunofluorescent staining was checked and recorded here. And now to the final stage of the electron microscopy. So what happened here? One core portion was fixed in EM solution of glutaraldehyde and Sorensen's buffer and then sent to Glasgow Electron Microscopy Laboratory. Here it was processed to remove water, sections taken and photographed after it was embedded and processed in EPON resin. And you can see in the image, the black and white image of the interior of the, gl the glomeruli was present here. The result was now recorded and for the final stage before the report was possible. So I'm now going to bring it all together and show you what the report result was. So the case study of the report, so the three images in the right hand side, the top image was the hematoxin ASIN like microscopy renal biopsy, which contained several glomeruli, as you can see in the image, the large rounder images are the glomeruli and several tubules, which are less important. The immunofluorescence is the second section, which and then the final image was down at the bottom is the electron microscopy. So for the report, renal LM, renal biopsies, the microscopy showed three cores of cortex and medulla containing up to eight glomeruli per section. So normally for glomeruli, the pathologist would like at least six to allow adequate diagnosis. The reason for this was basically so we can see how many were sclerosed so in this case, two of them are globally sclerosed, which the entire basement membrane and glomeruli was suffering damage. Four of them showed some crescents and focal necrosis, so they had some necrotic areas, but not total. And one glomerulus was normal, and one was showing endocapillary cellularity with no blood clots seen. However, in this report, there was some debris and fibrosis seen. Interestingly enough, from the, electro the elastic band Giesen, they helped along with the hematoxin acin stain to notice that arteriosclerosis was present, potentially present and querying a history of hypertension due to artery narrowing from the special stain at this stage. The renal immunofluorescence 
Amyloflorescence studies showed focal non-specific lamellula and TBM staining for C3. So the C3 staining was positive, but the light chain restriction was not seen. So this also assisted in the diagnosis. And the final stage was the renal electron microscopy. The EM here was showing the glomerulus with 60% foot process effacement. So that showed the process in the glomerulus was suffering damage due to foot processes. And you can also at this stage, this all tied up to form a diagnosis, potentially in keeping with ANCA associated glomerular nephritis based on the three of them all put together. So the report summary and conclusion. The biopsy showed features in keeping with ANCA associated crescentic glomerular nephritis with mild chronic tubular interstitial damage. And why this was important was the biopsies led to a diagnosis for the patient and putting all the information from all three stages from the hematoxin AS and stain, the special stain, specifically the elastic van Giesen, also the immunofluorescence stain with the positive C3 and then the electron microscopy showing the foot process effacement damage. Putting all this together led to a diagnosis for the patient and using the results from all three procedures and also the several different specialist colleagues and departments to achieve a diagnosis for the patient, which is the most important part in the whole process here. So conclusions of the results of the project. So I would like to thank my colleagues from Monklands Laboratory, as well as the renal ward and Glasgow Electron Microscopy, particularly several different colleagues, including, including Jessica Rossi from Monklands for her immunofluorescence and also I would like to also provide my contact information if anyone wants to get into contact with me at all as well. Thank you everyone for listening and I hope this was useful. Thanks for listening.